There's nothing that gets me quite as excited in Frosthaven as opening a shiny new class box and taking a brand new character for a spin. Isaac and Team Cephalofair did a great job of making every class feel completely unique. And every time I play a new class, I feel like I'm exploring new territory. Unraveling the mystery of how to learn and maximize a brand new class is one of the most fulfilling parts of Frosthaven for me. At this point, my group is midway through our third summer in the Frosthaven campaign, and to date I've played and retired the Banner Spear, Meteor, and Bone Shaper classes. Now I've played a few scenarios with the drill, but that doesn't mean I'm ready to give you a guide and that's not what I'm going to try to do here. What I will do is give my first impressions on the class, how I'm learning it, how it plays, show you a few cards, and so forth. Now, fair warning, I could spoil just about anything about this locked class at this point, including the mini, how it's unlocked, and things of that nature. So if you're not into that, now is the time to leave. But that doesn't mean you couldn't like and subscribe before you do. Anyhow, let's get to it. Say hello to my brand new friend, Frankenbot. The drill seemed a fitting class for my next adventure, as I just got done watching the Fallout series on Amazon Prime, which I liked quite a bit. And the drill's aesthetic really reminds me of the robots within that universe. Anyhow, you unlock this class when you find a pile of old parts at the end of a later scenario. You can't do anything with the parts right away, but eventually you'll solve a puzzle within the puzzle book to unlock this class. I won't give you all the details here, but I'm sure if you really tried, you could find it using your friend Google. Now since Frankenbot is pieced together from old parts, hence the name, I went with a haphazard color scheme to reflect that. So how does this bucket of bolts play? Well, it starts with its core mechanic, pressure. The drill class has four levels of pressure, low, regular, high, and overpressure. You start every scenario at regular pressure. Each one of these states can provide bonuses or penalties to your actions. This mechanic is similar to the blink blade with its slow and fast turns. And whether the blink blade is going slow or fast, they get different abilities on their cards and the drill is the same way. The difference here is you have four states to deal with and not just two. You track the status of your current pressure level right here on your character mat. Probably the best way to understand this mechanic is to look at some specific examples. We'll start with steam armor. Now for the top action of steam armor, you put out one shield for the entire round and also infuse ice. That's the easy part. You'll see a red row and a yellow row underneath that one shield. What those indicate is bonuses or penalties that you will take depending on what pressure level you are at. For the red row, if you are over pressure, you have to do all the items listed in that red row. It gives you some bonus shields and some experience, but you also have to take damage and you will have to pressure down two steps. That's what those blue things with the down arrow represent. You'll see on the bottom half of the card actually there's a red thing with an up arrow, that's the opposite, that would increase your pressure. And then for the yellow row, that's what you have to do if you're at high pressure. Now both of those are mandatory. If you're at either of those pressure states, you must do all the things that are within that row. You can't save your pressure for a future turn, unfortunately. One important note about the pressure down actions that happen on these cards. Any pressure moving up or down will happen after the action is over, basically. So once you're finished with the top half of the card, then you would move your pressure down two slots. That's to make it so you don't actually activate two of them in a single action, because you can only ever activate one row of pressure bonuses. Now the bottom half of this card is a little less complicated. You have a move two, remember ignore that plus one. And if you're in the green or regular pressure, your pressure will move up one. If you're in the blue or low pressure, your pressure will move up one and you will gain an experience. Pretty simple. And this is where the complications come in with the drill. A lot of what you have to do is thinking one or two turns ahead. What pressure will I be at? What can I do to get my pressure up so I can do this particular type of action in the future? You'll have to be working on that your entire time playing this class. Now let's take a look at another card, Beam Axe. Whenever I hear this one, I think of Big Hero 6. Anyhow. First the top, it's a melee attack four, but if you're at green or blue pressure, that's all it is, a regular melee attack four. However, you'll see that if you're at over pressure or high pressure, that's where the fun begins. If you're at high pressure, you'll do an attack four on two different enemies. 
If you are over pressure, you can target three different enemies with this. In both cases, you get an experience. In both cases, you have to damage yourself. And in both cases, you lower your pressure afterwards. So if you're at overpressure, this is a level 1 non-loss, 4 attack on 3 enemies. That's not too shabby for a pile of old pinball machine parts. The bottom of this card is an always useful move 4 at its core. In this case, your bonus effects are dependent on being at the highest pressure, red, overpressure, or the lowest pressure, low pressure, blue. And interestingly, they give two very different effects. If you're at overpressure, you'll do damage to adjacent enemies at the end of that move. And if you're at low pressure, you'll heal any allies within range 1 after that move. Pretty interesting card. A few more important points about the drill. One, you do only have a 9 card hand. You do have a few ways to recover some cards, but I don't consider them all that dependable. Some other classes with low hand sizes have better ways to recover cards and help their stamina overall. I would say this has made it so that I favor long rests over short rests, and it's also made it so I'm very reluctant to use lost cards thus far. On the health side, you are on the tank hit point track, so you start at 10 and gain 2 every level. This is a great change after playing the Bone Shaper for so long. As far as builds go, there's really two ways you can go for the drill. You can either go straight tank, or go tanky melee DPS. I don't really have a strong sense of which one is more powerful at this point, but for right now I am going the DPS route, mostly because there are two other tanky characters in my party already. I would say there are some interesting things within the tanking build for the drill, like ways that you barely attack at all but soak up a lot of damage. And if you look back at the beam axe card that we looked at earlier, that gives you a good sense of the kind of things you can do with melee DPS. I also want to recommend a house rule we use for new characters. Now in my group we're pretty far in the prosperity track, so we start every new character at level 3 basically, which has its benefits for sure, but one of the drawbacks is that you do have to choose your level 2 and level 3 cards, or 2 level 2 cards or whatever it is you want to do. You have to choose that basically right at the start, which can be difficult when it's a class that you're not familiar with at all. So what we do is we have a little house rule that before you level up for the first time for real, you can freely respect those level 2 and 3 cards just to try things out. Give different things a test drive and see what you like best. To wrap things up, I think I still have to answer the most important question. Am I having fun with this class? Is it any good? Obviously I can't give a final answer at this point, but I will tell you that I am having fun so far. I do think that there's a lot more I could get out of the class. I don't feel like I'm maximizing. I don't think I'm playing the best right now, but that's kind of to be expected when you're starting a new character. I do have high hopes when I get really comfortable with the flow of the class and understand how to get the most out of it. But I would also say at this point that the drill really is a brain burner. If you want a simple class that's relatively easy to just go out there and hit things, this might not be the best class for you. You do have to plan ahead, I think maybe more than other classes. You have to think about turns and the turn after and maybe the turn after that. So there are some complications here and it's not necessarily easy to play. And that 9 card hand limit doesn't help things either to be honest. We'll have to see how it all shakes out for me over time, but for now I am optimistic. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.